everybody, Jordan with PictureMonk.com. Uh, get ready to show you how to make a motion video slash photo in Photoshop. This is a really uh, cool method to uh, to add interest in your photos. Um, let's say you want to do a photography story around one of your photos, and instead of just putting the photo up there like this and talking about it, you can actually put it in motion and give it more visual interest. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. It's going to be uh, it's going to be a real easy solution for this, a real easy method. Uh, it just takes a little bit of uh, a little bit of time and some steps to do this. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is we need to separate the background and the foreground from each other. The way we do that, or the way the best way I found to do it, is just to get the direct selection tool, uh, and I'm going to select out the foreground here. So I'm just going to start painting with the tool here and just go over all of this. I don't need to be extremely perfect for this. Um, and just select out uh, as much as you can. And try to get in as, as, as neat as you possibly can without spending tons of time on it. So just select out all of this. Alright, so we got all of that up there except for these things. And as you can see, we missed a couple spots here. Uh, and the way you bring those back is uh, you can hold the Alt or the Option key on your keyboard and it changes it to a minus sign. So we're just going to select out that. There we go. Bring that back in. Alright, I might bring this back in too, just a little bit of that. And do the same to these. For this, I'm actually not going to worry about the insides of these little uh, support poles. I'm just going to get the whole thing. All right, there we go. Select the whole thing, so now I'm going to go back there and take this out. All right. That should do for this purpose. So um, now we're gonna, just going to refine it a little bit. Go to click Refine Edge up there, and change. Uh, click on Smart Radius, and that'll bring some of this back, and just bump up the radius a little bit so it can start bringing some. Contract the edges here, so Shift Edge will bring in, make the selection tighter, smooth it out. And uh, the last thing I'm going to do is just change my output to and to uh, change it to a new layer with layer mask. All right. Oh, see what happened there? That's why we do the layer mask. It took out the windows. So I need to go on the layer mask here and get my black brush, or I'm sorry, my white brush, and just paint that back in. There we go. If we didn't do that, we would have to go back in there and reselect the windows. But that's why I always like to use the layer mask um, option. Uh, so if I do see something that's missing, I can paint it back in. I can even go back up here and paint out this or paint back in this blue or the the dark spot here. Um, and then bring that back in. That'll work just fine. All right. Uh, so now we have two layers. We have a background layer, which we started with, and our new layer. So for the background layer, I'm basically just going to delete that. I don't really need that anymore. I'm going to duplicate this layer, and I'm going to go to the bottom layer, and I'm going to uh, hold Command and click on the layer mask. That will select this whole layer mask, uh, this whole foreground, which is what we just took out. So uh, I'm going to click Edit, Fill, and then fill that with black. And I'm going to deselect the top layer. So now we have nothing on our on our uh, on our artboard here. I'm going to go to select inverse, which basically just instead of selecting the foreground, it selects the uh, background here. And then I'm going to fill that with white. So that will bring back our sky, just like that. 
Now you can deselect by clicking Command D and click on the top layer and now we have our whole photo back uh, the way it was. <clears throat> if you're happy with the way this uh, all is, then you can, um, for this layer to work, or for this method to work, we need to click on and make all of these uh, layers a smart object. Just right click on the bottom layer here, uh, convert to smart object, right click again, convert to smart object. Now these are two individual layers with no changes being able to be made now. Uh, which is fine because we're happy with the way it turned out. Now we need to make uh, a video timeline of these two images. And the way you do that is to click view, uh, Window and then Timeline and that'll bring down our timeline here. Uh, this is basically used just for the video function in, in Photoshop. Um, and then now create video timeline. That'll put both of our layers down here the way we have them. So the background sky layer back here is moving around behind there. Um, next thing we need to do is we need to transform our sky layer. Uh, so I'm going to click Command T and bring up the transform. The reason I want to do this is because since I had to select around these guys, that whole selection is still there. And so if I start this method, you're going to see transparency behind that. We don't want that. Uh, I could easily just go in there and clone this out, put sky back in. Um, but since this image is so large, scaling this up is not going to make it look any different or look any worse so I'm just going to move this around right around there and then click enter so now we have our new transform sky here um, and to make this in motion we're going to click this little sky, triangle here next to our sky layer and you'll see a transform opacity and style we're mainly going to be concentrating on the transform uh, this little stopwatch here means that it's going to set a marker of where your sky motion begins and ends. So I'm going to click the uh, stopwatch here to set one marker. Then I'm going to scroll all the way to the end and I'm going to hit Command T again to transform it. So now this is where I want my sky to finish, the motion in my sky to finish. So I'm going to stretch it out a little bit move it over just a little bit here like that and click enter and that'll automatically set another marker down here so as we scrub through you can see the sky move looks pretty good now I want to actually make my foreground uh, move just a little bit so I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to click on this background uh, two layer here and do the little triangle, bring down the menu, click the transform, scroll all the way to the end, command T to transform the layer and just pull it out a little bit. I don't want this one to be too drastic of a change. Maybe like that. Okay, so we'll go all the way back to the end here and do a quick scrub and you can see it move. Now if you hit the space bar, it'll actually start doing, it'll start playing this, but it's going to have to render each frame, so it's going to be very slow. Um, and it's going to be very slow for me because i got screen flow running in the background. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and export the video. And so the one I need to do is go to File, Export, Render Video. And then just click where you want to save it. So I'm just going like, to click this Select Folder. Uh, I'll just pop it on my desktop. And uh, if you want to put this on YouTube, just do the H.264. You can change all the quality options here. You have um, got a bunch of stuff you can, you can change. And just click uh, Render Video. And that'll start rendering the video. Depending on how long you, you want your photo to be, it's going to take longer, obviously. But uh, And that's, that's about it, guys. Uh, once your video is rendered, you'll be able to do whatever you want with it. Put it in another video projects, pop it on YouTube, uh, just whichever you want to do with it. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial, and I will talk to you guys later.